Thank you for the introduction and opportunity to speak here at Ophthalmology Futures Forums. I'm Sean McCafferty from Tucson, Arizona, CEO and President of Conexus Lens. Conexus Lens, who are we? At Conexus, we are an early stage ophthalmic and optics development company with solutions that are needs-based and whose guiding principles are simplicity, effectiveness, and demonstrated clinically pragmatic. Conexus Lens is ideally situated in Optics Valley, Tucson, Arizona, along with two other sponsors of the forum, Intor Technologies and Salutaris MD, as well as dozens of other related companies. Conexus has resource access to the College of Optical Sciences at the University of Arizona, the largest academic optics program in the world. As scientific advisors, we have Jim Schweigerling and Aniko Anikov, many of whom you may know. Internally, we have extensive expertise in medicine, surgery, optical, mechanical, and biomedical engineering. Conexus Lens has access to a large, diverse patient population of approximately 30,000 patients per year through its affiliation with Arizona Eye Consultants. Additionally, two affiliated surgical centers allow access to more than 11,000 ocular procedures per year. Visually significant age-related macular degeneration is the leading cause of first world blindness. Additionally, there are another 7 million people with low vision from other retinal diseases. Current treatment for those with disability is almost exclusively through retinal image magnification using external telescopes, high mag lenses, electronic magnification, and internal telescopes. So my patient with a disability who cannot read without these magnifying devices. As cataract surgeons, we almost typically perform monofocal intraocular lens calculations, setting the patient for myopia to maximize magnification and the patient's visual utility. The problem requires a clear understanding of the critical design parameters which will make or break the, the success of any variable focus intraocular lens for age-related macular degeneration. These design parameters are very similar for presbyopia correcting intraocular lenses with the exception of the highlighted accommodative amplitude. The distinct advantage to the patient is that they have an implanted lens which is capable of focusing at a distance as close as one to two inches from in front of the eye. This allows a bilateral image magnification on the retina of four to six times over what is achieved by a plus three reader. Here we will introduce our variable hyperfocal lens for patients with macular degeneration. We will discuss our concept, mathematical modeling, and our preliminary prototype. The coupled lens design is exceedingly simple in that it has just two mechanically coupled intraocular lenses made of the same materials currently used, a low modulus of elasticity material, silicone, hydrogel, or colomer. Each lens is inserted separately through a less than three millimeter incision and coupled inside the capsular bag. The lens's mechanical coupling forces an applanation of the two internal interfaces which progressively negates their contribution to the total lens power. This is a simple but extremely effective novel technology, not only in IOL design, but in all optics as well. The coupling and lens power change work with the natural accommodative feedback of our eye. Ciliary muscle relaxation increases zonular tension, which equatorially expands and actually compresses the soft lenses together for distance focus. Ciliary muscle contraction reverses this process, allowing relaxation of the lens to its unstressed state and accommodates to a very near focus of one to two inches. Variation in these pressures between these two extremes will accommodate at any desired object distance, maximizing retinal focus. Critical aspects of this design include the applanating interface which is actuated with less than one gram of axial force and remains stable with good visual quality throughout the accommodative range, noted by a visual strail ratio of greater than 0.7. This process is outlined in our publication in Translational Visual Science and Technology. 
Additionally, the coupling haptics must be designed to maintain rotational and translational stability in all axes while being actuated by the eye's accommodative force as shown here. Also, the haptic design registers to correct for individual capsular size and shape differences as well as varying degrees of capsular phimosis and to maintain continued operation after a YAG capsulotomy. To prove the feasibility and measure the applinating interface design, we coupled two silicone prolate aspheric IOLs in an ex vivo capsular actuating device. The next two slides will show videos demonstrating the lens's applinating interface and hyperfocal accommodation. With the same ex vivo capsular device and dark field microscopy, we can see the power changing interface during actuation in which it expands during distance focus and reversibly and repeatedly contracts for near focus. Imaging with the primary prototype through our ex vivo capsule, we are able to demonstrate greater than 16 diopters of continuous accommodation in air, effectively providing a hyperfocal capacity. This is what allows my patient with macular degeneration to more easily function on a daily basis. We, we, we simultaneously measured actuation force and optical quality. The prototype lens uses a physiologic one gram of axial pressure on a six millimeter diameter optic with a satisfactory visual strail ratio of 0 0.7. Further design improvements are expected. The advantages of Conexus is that it is a simple design, uses existing materials with negligible change in surgical technique. It provides a much larger binocular image magnification than anything presently available. This substantially restores a patient's activities of daily living without external devices using the patient's natural accommodation. Coupled haptics still operate with equatorial expansion even after a YAG capsulotomy. Registering haptics adjust for different sizes and shapes of the capsular bag and adjust for progressive capsular phimosis. Possible future expansion into presbyopia correction certainly is possible. At Kinexus, we have a commitment to restoring lives through sight using a device which is both simple, effective, and clinically pragmatic. Thank you.